Program Manager, Brooke Cross. Hi, Brooke. Hi. Good to see you. Welcome back. Thank you. We've got uh, some events coming up that we want to share with the community that are of particular uh, interest to uh, the recovery uh, community, all dealing with overdose prevention and awareness. Still, it's the opioids. It's the big, still the big problem. Yes, sir. What's, uh, what's coming up this week? Um, so this Saturday out at uh, the Brooklyn Branch Library, we'll be hosting an opioid community conversation. And that's to bring awareness to opioid use in um, different townships of Jackson County. We will be offering free Narcan, free Narcan training, stigma reduction training. And we have a couple local champions from out there that will be speaking as well. People in recovery? Yes, there will be a panel discussion with um, a couple local champions, Jay Niles, and a couple recovery coaches from the Home and New Vision will be on a panel discussion. Nice. And Jay's the uh, police chief uh, at Columbia. Yes, sir. So uh, when we're talking about um, opioids, that is uh, all of them, in including fentanyl. Correct. How much of, uh, how much of a problem has fentanyl become in our community? So fentanyl is one of the leading causes of accidental death in the U.S. Um, currently. We are, haven't seen any statistics of any real heroin going around. Um, it is mostly all fentanyl. They are putting fentanyl into pill form. They are putting it into other substances. It is very dangerous out there for somebody who uses substances or take opioid medications. And you have some statistics that are uh, just very sad. Um, in the past, I think the most recent uh, period that you've um, got from September of 2022 to August of 2023, one year, Jackson County had 34 overdose deaths. Correct. It's amazing. Yeah, over 1,500 non-fatal overdoses. Wow. So. That's like five a day. Yes. And the police, they're uh, responding, and sometimes they make it in time, sometimes they don't. Um, what about um, Narcan? How much um, has that impacted? Or is that saving lives? So we had 1,500 non-fatal overdoses where naloxone was administered in some of them. So there are some people that are able to recover because people around them had Narcan mm -hmm. and knew how to use it. We do have several um, Narcan box locations in Jackson community where Narcan is free and able to access. And you can't use it on yourself. Correct. You're out. Yes. So people, who should be, who should be educated on Narcan? Everyone, Everyone. should be educated on yeah. Narcan. Um, a lot of overdoses are happening more in public. Um, so that is our efforts into bringing public awareness to the opioid epidemic and that people can save lives. Yeah, I was um, at Andy's place uh, last year and uh, someone gave me some nar Narcan. And I said, I don't think I'll. And uh, she said, no, you never know. I didn't think I'd use it, but I did. I just shopping at Walmart, I, she had to use it. So you yeah. never know. So it does, it's the difference between uh, life and death. Um, so this Saturday is the um, event at the Brooklyn branch of the Jackson District Library. What are the hours? So it'll be from noon to 1.30 and there will be snacks provided, um, great people, great resources. We will go through resources as well and offer free naloxone, CPR face shields. And what's interesting about having this in Brooklyn, it's, uh, it's by purpose. It's, it's, the, it's, it's not urban core that's the problem, it's everywhere, including the rural. Yep, and the Jackson County Health Department will be there to share statistics specific to Brooklyn as well. Oh, wow. Uh, next up, we have an overdose awareness event, and that's happening on the 24th of August. What's this about? So Overdose Awareness Day, it's, it's nationally recognized on August 31st, however, it, um, falls on a holiday weekend. So we are honoring it on August 24th. Here we will um, have a day of rem remembrance for those that we've lost to substance use disorder. 
um, but also to bring awareness to our community that these things are happening and there's a way, um, a way out. With uh, stigma, which is going to be a topic at both, both of these events, are people becoming uh, more uh, receptive to um, those who are dealing with uh, addiction and recovery and getting more support? Is the stigma still, still strong? So I, I do think it's improving a little bit. Mm. It's a hard thing to measure, right? Because yeah. as soon as you're like, oh, we got everyone on board, then all of a sudden you find one that still has a lot of stigma. So our efforts are to continue to get out in the community and provide some education. Mm. I think a lot of times we fear what we don't know and a little education goes a long way. Yeah, and there are a lot of families that are dealing with us. One in three households. Yeah, people you know. All right, and then uh, we've got an annual event that's happening in September, which is a walk. The ninth annual walk yeah. for recovery. What's this for? Um, so we, each year for our ninth annual, um, we hold an annual awareness walk for recovery. Usually has about 300 to 350 attendees. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have testimonies. We have uh, Narcan training there as well. This year we are putting treatment court judge Jordan into the dunk tank. Oh, she'll love um, that. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's gonna be a fun time out to the home of New Vision. And the, while we talked um, about the first um, two events uh, focused on opioids, this Walk for Recovery, this covers everything and everyone that's recovery in recovery from something. That is correct. And the, their families and allies, yeah. It's for the family as well. Mm -hmm. So alcohol, um, drugs, narcotics, you name it. Everyone's welcome to be part of this. Yes. And what do you need for you have uh, sponsors? Do people need to register ahead of time? Um, so registration begins for our recovery walk at 10 a.m. on September 14th. Um, donations are accepted um, by check at our recovery community organization. Um, also through our website at homeandnewvision.org donations can be made. Nice. And what's happening at Home and Division? We just had a, uh, a ribbon cutting uh, a yeah. few weeks ago. What was yeah. that for? That was for our harm reduction program. So we've been into our building at the harm reduction building for three years now. So we did do our ribbon cutting. Mm -hmm. um, COVID had us a little behind on the ribbon cutting, but we were able to do that. All right. And uh, there's details on uh, all of these events on uh, websites and social media. And we'll also have them on our website on Today in the J. Hope you have a nice turnout and uh, keep up the great work. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in, Brooke. Brooke Cross is Jackson Area Recovery Community Program Manager at Home of New Vision. Well, that's it. We've run out of time. Thanks to uh, Brooke and everyone with us.